Hey aspiring actuaries, welcome back to my channel, The Actuarial Quest. I am Anchal, your actuarial mentor and a qualified actuary and this video is a part of the Know Your Exam series in which I brief you on all the actuarial subjects one by one. The subject of today's Know Your Exam video is CM2 which is Financial Engineering and Loss Reserving. So today I am going to give an overview of the subject CM2 including what all you will learn from this subject, its exam format, its recent year pass rates and pass marks, its prerequisite subjects and the most interesting, its application in the actuarial work. So what is CM2 all about? Let's find out. Firstly, CM2 as a subject is going to be interesting and of importance to those who would like to explore the investment side of the actuarial work as 80% of the syllabus deals with financial markets, investments, different stochastic asset valuation models and asset pricing models and this part constitutes the financial engineering part of the syllabus and the rest 20% syllabus is the loss reserving part which focuses on the methods of calculating reserves for short term liabilities. Also I would like to tell you that there's a good amount of stochastic calculus and differential equations derived in the syllabus which is quite hard to understand at the first place. The good thing is that these derivations are less often tested in the exams. Rather, the practical application of all these derivations is what you need to be more comfortable with. The syllabus begins with setting some base around how efficient the financial markets can be. For example, a market can be strong form efficient if the market value of the share of a particular company is exactly what all investors believe to be its true and fair value. So that no investor can make use of some additional information or you know insider information to buy or sell the share and make a profit. In a strong form efficient market, such trading to make profits is not possible. All the financial assets are correctly priced. The syllabus also sets some base around the different utility functions or utility equations for different types of investors as in the level of utility or the level of satisfaction that different investors will get by investing a particular amount of wealth in a particular asset. You will also study about the behavior of investors around how they choose between different investments and the bias or error with which they make the investment decision. Suppose a company or an individual needs to make an investment decision. Let's say they have two investment options to choose from. What do you think will be the factors that they will take into consideration when choosing between these two investment options? As per CM2, the two most measurable factors are 1. The average return from both these investments and 2. How much risky these investments are. So in CM2, you will study different models of investment returns and you will study how to calculate the average return and riskiness of different investment portfolios using these investment models. There are different types of multi-factor models for modeling the returns of any investment. Some of these factors might be specific to that particular investment. For example, a ban in leather products would only impact the returns of a leather based company. And these factors constitute the specific risk of an investment. While there are some factors that affect the overall market or they affect all the companies, just that the extent with which they impact different companies is different. For example, an increase in petrol prices would impact the overall market because it leads to inflation and all companies will get affected by inflation and such factors that affect the overall market constitute the systematic risk. There's also a theory which is called mean variance portfolio theory. Mean which is the measure of average return and variance which is the measure of risk of an investment. So mean variance portfolio theory helps an investor to select a portfolio of investment that gives a known average return at a particular level of risk. You will also study the asset pricing model which is called the CAPM model. So it gives an equation to model the expected return of an investment portfolio in terms of the risk free rate of return plus the risk premium. Risk premium represents the extra risk taken by investing in this particular portfolio. So if you invest in a risky portfolio, then you will need an extra return in order to compensate for the extra risk taken, right? 
such an equation can be solved to find out the expected return of any investment portfolio and then we can use this expected return in order to price the financial assets then you will study the stochastic models for security prices stochastic models models where the factors or parameters are not fixed instead they follow an underlying distribution or process like a very important uh, stochastic process discussed in cm2 is the brownian motion so to predict the future movement of a share price we can use such a process called brownian motion such stochastic models can also be used to price derivatives now don't worry as i explain you everything i will also explain you what derivatives are now suppose you know that you will need 100 liters of petrol in exactly 6 months time and you also think that the petrol prices might shoot up to unreasonably high levels by that time so you might have to purchase petrol at a very high price then one thing that you can do is that you can purchase it right away at the current price but then you will have to store it for a long time and that doesn't sound like a good idea so a better option to consider is to enter into a derivative contract that would allow you to buy 100 liters of petrol at a specified date in future at a prefixed price so in a way you are fixing the price that you will have to pay for the petrol after 6 months irrespective of whatever the petrol price will be at that time The types of derivatives that you will study are futures, forwards, options. You will study two different approaches to option pricing. One of them is based on a discrete model, the binomial tree method, and the other one and the more popular one is based on a continuous model which is called the Black-Scholes derivative pricing model. You will also study three different stochastic models of interest rates. Now what is the purpose of studying the interest rate models it is so that you can price any investment or derivative which is based on interest rates for example pricing a bond or pricing any interest rate derivative you will also study different models of credit risk now credit risk risk that a party or a company will default on its payment example a company has issued a bond and it has to pay coupon payments every month so one of the factors on which the price of this bond will depend will be the credit risk or the default probability of the company hence modeling credit risk is also one important area types of credit risk models are structural models based on the financial structure of the company issuing the bond example of a structural model that you will study is the merton model and the other credit risk models like the reduced form models or the intensity based models which model the credit risk on the basis of the rate or probability or intensity of switching from one credit rating to another now that was all around the modeling and pricing of the assets a good scoring portion of cm2 syllabus deals with the liability valuation an insurance company would need to value how much money it needs to hold in order to meet all the future uncertain claims right so you will study the ruin theory where you will calculate the probability of ruin of a particular insurance company that is probability that the insurance company's surplus will fall below zero surplus is the excess amount of assets that the company holds over its liabilities then lastly you will study the run off triangles with which you can forecast the future claim numbers and amounts on the basis of the trends observed in the past and by forecasting the future claims company can decide how much needs to be set aside now as a reserve to meet all the future payments that need to be made the exam format of cm2 is similar to cm1 it has two papers paper a is a 100 mark written theoretical exam of 3 hours and 15 minutes and paper b is a 100 mark practical excel based exam of 1 hour 45 minutes both papers are conducted back to back in two consecutive days the difficulty level of cm2 is one step above its base subject which is cm1 its pass rates are slightly lower than the pass rates of cm1 usually less than 50% and the recent year pass marks have been around 60 
prerequisite subjects are CM1 and CS1. I think CM2 is actually CS1 and CM1 combined, extended and then applied to the finance and investments area. So you must have cleared CS1 and CM1 exams before you jump on to the CM2 exam. And if you have also studied CS2, then some stochastic process discussed in CM2 will be a little easier for you. But otherwise also it is totally fine. By this time, you must have known that CM2 is built around investment modeling and derivative pricing. So you can easily guess the field where you will see its practical application. Topics in CM2 are further built upon in the specialization subjects SP5 and SP6. If you wish to become an investment actuary, then CM2 will be a good foundation for you. An investment actuary is someone who decides the investment strategy for insurance or pension companies or even for investment banks or mutual funds. And the runoff triangles part of the syllabus is directly relevant in the general insurance area. So if you work in the general insurance area, then you will see the practical application of the runoff triangles in order to calculate the reserves for the company. All right, that's all about the subject CM2. And you know, I feel so happy that I explained such a technical subject like CM2. So if you think that I explained it quite well, then do give this video a thumbs up because then this will motivate me to continue making such challenging videos on further actuarial subjects. The whole purpose of this Know Your Exam series is to give you an overview of all the actuarial subjects. As I think that getting an overview of any actuarial subject before you start studying for it gives some clarity that at high level what this subject is all about. And an overview of the subject is also helpful if you want to decide or select your next actuarial subject. So I'll definitely cover all other actuarial subjects in the upcoming videos of the Know Your Exam series. Subscribe to this channel for all insights around the actuarial profession. Signing off for now, we'll be back soon.